Today's lesson is on isosceles and equilateral triangles. Take a minute to read over the learning goal and the scale. Find where you are on the scale before we start the lesson. The angles and sides of isosceles and equilateral triangles have special relationships. The congruent sides of an isosceles triangle are called its legs. The third side is its base. Please note that the triangle does not always sit on its base. The two congruent legs form the vertex angle. And the other two angles between the base and each leg are called the base angles. Isosceles triangles are common in the real world. We frequently see them in structures such as bridges and buildings as well as in art and design. Take a look at the triangles below. In the Dorito, we have two congruent sides, or the legs, and here is the base. In the pennant, we have two congruent sides, which are the legs, and here is the base. In the walking sign, two congruent sides, the legs, and the base. And in the coat hanger, here are our two congruent sides, the legs, and here is the base. The isosceles triangle theorem states that if two sides of a triangle are congruent, such as side AC and side BC, then the angles opposite those sides are also congruent. So here, angle A is opposite side BC, so it is congruent to angle B, which is opposite side AC. When we prove the isosceles triangle theorem, we will need to use an auxiliary line. Let's start with isosceles triangle XYZ. We are then going to draw the auxiliary line XB. This will be the bisector of the vertex angle YXZ. Let's first begin with the given stating that side XY is congruent to side X, er, XZ. Next, we'll use the given fact that segment XB is the bisector of angle YXZ. By the definition of angle bisector, we know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. By the reflexive property of congruence, side XB is congruent to side XB. We now have three congruent corresponding parts of triangle YXB congruent to three corresponding parts of triangle ZXB. So by side angle side, side angle side, Triangle XYB is congruent to triangle XZB. Finally, we can prove the isosceles triangle theorem stating that because we have two congruent legs, the angles opposite those sides, angle Y and angle Z, are congruent by CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. The converse of the isosceles triangle theorem states that if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are also congruent. So, since angle A is congruent to angle B, the side opposite angle A, side BC, is congruent to the side opposite angle B, side AC. The proof of the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem also involves the use of an auxiliary line. We're going to start with triangle PRQ, with angle P being congruent to angle Q. We then want to draw segment RS, which is the bisector of angle PRQ. Since the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem states, if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are also congruent, we are trying to prove side PR congruent to side QR. So let's start with the given that angle P is congruent to angle Q and that segment RS bisects angle PRQ. By the definition of angle bisector, angle PRS is congruent to angle QRS. Now that we have two pairs of congruent corresponding angles, we need a congruent corresponding side. So by the reflexive property of congruence, let's say that side RS is congruent to side RS. We can now say that triangle PRS is congruent to triangle QRS by the angle-angle-side theorem, angle-angle-side. 
Since all corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, we know that side PR is congruent to side QR by CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Example 1 uses the isosceles triangle theorem. Let's look at part A. Is segment AB congruent to segment CB? Explain. Since angle A of triangle ABC is congruent to angle C, we know the sides opposite those angles are also congruent. Since side BC is opposite angle A and side BA is opposite angle C, yes, side AB is congruent to side CB. Part B wants to know if angle A is congruent to angle DEA. Well, since side AD is congruent to side ED in triangle ADE, then yes, the angles opposite those sides, angle A and angle DEA, are also congruent. This is the isosceles triangle theorem. Pause the video and do you try number one. Part A, is angle WVS congruent to angle S? Is side TR congruent to side TS? Okay, let's start with the first question. Since in triangle WVS, side WV is congruent to side WS, we know the angles opposite those sides will also be congruent. So yes, angle WVS is congruent to angle S by the isosceles triangle theorem. Since angle S is congruent to angle R, we know that the sides opposite those angles in triangle TRS are also congruent. So side TS will be congruent to side TR by the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. Part B wants to know if we can conclude that triangle RUV is, an, is isosceles. Since we do not know if angle R is congruent to angle UVR, and we do not know if side RU is congruent to side VU, we do not have enough information to say whether or not triangle RUV is isosceles. Theorem 4-5 states that if a line bisects the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle, then the line is also the perpendicular bisector of the base. Let's prove that theorem. Let's start with the given information that side AC is congruent to side BC and angle ACD is congruent to angle BCD. By the reflexive property of congruence, segment CD is congruent to segment CD. Now we can say that triangle ACD is congruent to triangle BCD by side angle side. Since corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, we know that side AD is congruent to side BD and angle CDA is congruent to angle CDB. By the definition of a linear pair, we know that angle CDA and angle CDB are supplementary. Since angles CDA and CDB are both supplementary and congruent, we know that they must be right angles. And finally, since segment CD and segment AB form two right angles, by the definition of perpendicular, segment CD is perpendicular to segment AB. In example two, we will use algebra along with the isosceles triangle theorems to find the value of x. There are two ways to solve this problem. I'll show you one way now and the other way in the U-try. Since we can see that triangle ABC is an isosceles triangle because side AB is congruent to side CB, we know that angle A is congruent to angle C. Therefore, Angle C is 54 degrees. Since the sum of the three angles of a triangle is always 180, I know that angle A plus angle ABC and ang plus angle C will equal 180. The measures of angles A and C 
are both 54. So I'm going to substitute that in for the measure of angle A and the measure of angle C. I'll combine like terms and 108 plus the measure of angle ABC will equal 180. By the subtraction property of equality, the measure of angle ABC will equal 72. Since the measure of angle ABC can be divided into two congruent angles, both with a value of X, I know that X is going to be half of 72 degrees. Therefore, the value of X is 36. Pause the video and do you try number two. If the measure of angle A is 27, what is the value of X? I'm going to show you a different way to solve for X this time. Again, because triangle ABC is isosceles, I know that the base angles A and C are congruent. I also know that since segment DB bisects angle ABC, that this is the perpendicular bisector of the base. So angle ADB and angle CDB are both right angles. Since the sum of the three angles of a triangle is 180, I know that 27 plus 90 plus X will equal 180. I'll combine like terms and 117 plus X will equal 180. By the subtraction property of equality, X will equal 63. A corollary is a theorem that can be proved easily by using another theorem. Since a corollary is a theorem, we can use it as a reason in a proof. Look at corollary to theorem 4-3. If a triangle is equilateral, then the triangle is equiangular. That means if three sides of a triangle are congruent, their three angles are also congruent. Corollary to theorem 4-4 states that if a triangle is equiangular, then it is also equilateral, meaning if three angles of a triangle are congruent, then the three sides of that triangle are also congruent. In example three, we will find angle measures. What are the measures of angle A, B, and angle ADC in the photo at the right? Since these three triangles, triangle ADE, triangle BCE, and triangle DCE are all equilateral, I know that they are also equiangular. All three of them have a sum of 180, and they are also congruent. So the measure of each angle is 60. Since angle ADC consists of two 60-degree angles, its measure will be 120. Pause the video and do you try number three. Let's suppose these three triangles are isosceles triangles where angle ADE, angle DEC, and angle ECB are all vertex angles. If each of the vertex angles have a measure of 58, what are the measures of angle A and angle BCD? In an isosceles triangle, we know that the base angles are congruent since all three vertex angles are congruent, each base angle of these three triangles will also be congruent. So let's start with the equation that this angle plus this angle plus this one have a sum of 180. We know that this angle has a measure of 58 and these two are congruent. I'm going to let X be the measure of each base angle. We'll combine like terms and 58 plus 2X will equal 180. By the subtraction property of equality, 2x will equal 122. By the division property of equality, x will equal 61. Since x represents the value or the measure of each, each base angle, the measure of angle A is 61. Since the measure of angle BCD is 58 plus a base angle of 61, the measure of angle BCD equals 119. Now is your chance to see how well you understand the lesson. Pause the video and do the lesson check. Don't forget to check your answers on the next slide. If there are any questions you didn't understand, please be sure to ask me in class. If you rock the lesson check, let's see you rock the challenge. 
Take a minute to reread the learning goal and the scale. See if you've climbed any higher on the scale since we started the lesson.